men. What are we? Is a man based entirely on his strength? Is a man based entirely on his skill with a barbecue? All right, tomahawk, ribeye, baby. No, I didn't drop it in dirt. Grow up. Smoke it at 225 until it hits 120. These are the questions that I'm going to attempt to answer today. The last video I made, I talked about how to write a strong female character. And so today, just to be even and equal, we're going to talk about how to write a strong man. Now. That was fucking stupid. Strong male characters is something that a lot of people don't seem to grasp. Uh, a male character in Hollywood, for example, is either some completely untouchable badass who has no emotion and is really quite uninteresting, or he's a spineless noodle uh, written by some kind of feminist who has no agency and basically does whatever the strong female character does bit, 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 tells him to do. You're doing well. Patronize me like that again, Captain. I'll have your ship. Come then. If we're talking about strong male characters that are going to connect with an audience, generally these two things don't work. From Jiyun authors, young Christian storytellers. How to write a male character, if you're not. Now this is, I assume, for women who are writing men. Let's see what a woman, I think, has to say about how a woman should write a man. I will now attempt to answer a cosmic question that has eluded even the best of authors for centuries. Now as a general rule, females are much better at writing males than males are at writing females. Okay. That said, there are some critical mistakes that I have noticed over the years when it comes to male characters written by females. I would like to offer my assistance. The male mind is much harder to write than you would think. As a man, is my mind that complicated? I've also read other books where the male main character is just off. He doesn't act or think the way an actual male would. He's either unnaturally moral <laughs> brave, selfless, or sacrificial, or woodenly selfish and crude without a human bone in his body. Now, if you read between the lines there a little bit, there's no way an actual male would act unnaturally moral, brave, selfless, or sacrificial. That's complete bullshit. Have you met a man in your life? We're selfish fucking assholes, giving him an overly protective instinct. Yes, boys are protective but they're hardly aware of it and rarely think about it. Common mistake I see in a female author's book will be a description of the boy's thoughts and how he will protect his sister, his mother, or his crush. It's an attractive thought, one that is perfectly good, wholesome, and desirable. And so therefore, you should not use it, because it's wholesome, good, and desirable. And who wants that shit? When a man steps into a protective role, it's 90% instinctual. Uh, I think I might have to double check that through a psychologist, uh, but June author's uh, Christian writing advice I think is probably good enough for, you know, determining human psychology, as long as it relates to the Bible. Mistake number two, making him totally selfless. <laughs> because men, as we all know, are completely selfish assholes. Even if you're writing a good guy, Never mistake his selfless actions for selfless intentions. You're writing about a man, not an angel. Your male character should at least notice what's in it for him. What happens is if you make all of your male characters spineless, uh, you know, sea sponges who can't make decisions for themselves unless they run it by a woman, what is that? do to the young generation of boys that are growing up watching these things, is the boy will see this and see all these male characters as useless and having to, you know, check themselves through a woman, and they'll say, oh, well, I can't make any decisions for myself because no hero in anything that I've seen on TV 
tells me that I can. A, a story is about teaching you something at the end of the day. You know, it's, you're, it's entertaining you, but it's also teaching you. That's why you have morals. Like, what's the moral of the story? Well, there's a reason why we have that. Making him too sensitive. <laughs> Solution. <coughs> oh, I just got over COVID, by the way, so if I start hacking up my lungs like an old man in this video, that would be why. Give him a little arrogance, because men are arrogant pigs, and we all know this. Men can be and are sensitive, some more than others. There's nothing wrong with including sensitive males in your story, but it's challenging to execute them correctly. <laughs> you know, just the way that this is written, because so far we've gotten like, don't make him overly protective, don't make him selfless, so he's not protective and he's a selfish asshole, don't make him sensitive, make him uh, an emotionless piece of shit, so we've got, he's not protective, he's not, uh, he's not selfless, and he's not sensitive. So what is he? Is he a antagonist? Is he a villain? If you want to write a man, that's what you should aim for. <laughs> what the fuck? I was, uh, criticized for citing Reddit and Twitter in my last video, uh, so I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> But only very briefly, so before you comment and freak out that I'm using Reddit, hold on to your shit, we're, f we're not gonna be here a while. To me, a strong male character is one who is attuned to his feelings. So this contradicts what we just read. Why do I say this? Because I think many men are taught or bullied from a young age to separate out female feelings from masculine feelings. They aren't allowed to be afraid or sad or uncertain or anything that deviates from knowing angrily what to do. I mean, when I was growing up, it was very much, you know, don't cry. Men don't cry. You, sh you should be You're showing this emotion. You. Impetus of that kind of perspective on what a man is comes from the fact that men are generally expected to moderate their feelings very efficiently so what should be taught to young boys is that you can have feelings and you ha you do because you're a human and humans have feelings but it's how you deal with them that makes you a man it makes you a man i eat everything on the pig except the squeal huh Oink. <laughs> displaying anger all the time is exactly going against that thing of be a man. In order to be a man, you can't express sadness or cry or whatever it is. Well, why should you be allowed to express anger? Because anger is an emotion and anger is too much anger. You know, an outburst of anger is showing that you can't control your emotion. Now we're going to look at Idris Elba's face, apparently. Why, what the fuck is this called? Hollywood needs fewer strong male characters. Women have long criticized Hollywood for failing to create strong female characters. Maybe it's time for men to speak out too and tell Hollywood that what we need as men <laughs> is fewer strong male characters. Oh no. To make the way for women, I guess, is the point that this person's trying to make. What, when I say we need fewer strong male characters, I'm thinking about a particular definition of strong. Strong female character is often used to mean fully developed with agency. But especially in action films, strong also tends to mean, well, strong. If you're in an action movie and are integral to the plot, then you tend to be a badass with combat skills who fights and wins. You're a tough guy like Superman or James Bond or Idris Elba in Pacific Rim. That's a weird fucking, you go from Superman to James Bond to Idris Elba in Pacific Rim. What is his character's name? You don't even tell what his name is. Today we are canceling the apocalypse. So why is a man, it's just, I can't get over that. 
Superman. Why is my camera fucked? There we go. Superman. James Bond. Or Idris Elba. <laughs> It's not just that Hollywood kills more men because more men are standing around as cannon fodder. The deaths of women are actually treated differently. And what happens to many of these strong, active male characters, they get killed. Hundreds of them, deliberately humiliating and in deliberately humiliating and jokey ways. So your argument what hollywood tends to cast more men than women because hollywood is sexist so you've got men dying it doesn't have to do with men in particular it's just that men are the default human beings what the fuck is the argument only woman who dies is one of jabba the hut's erotic dancers huh what what is the argument <laughs> Idris Elba and Pacific Rim. Today we are canceling the apocalypse! Ah! I think we're gonna... <laughs> Fuck! Common stereotypes of men in media from mediasmarts.ca Self-sufficient Acting tough Physical attractiveness Rigid masculine gender roles Heterosexuality and homophobia. <laughs> Men should avoid being gay or perceived as being gay. Like Fred, like Dick, you know, the, oh. the pick. Men also commit 62.5% of violent acts compared to 375 in female characters. So you want women to be more uh, homicidal? Like, what... <laughs> the argument that we've been seeing in this uh, so far is that if you want to write a strong man, he needs to be an arrogant asshole who's completely selfish. Uh, and that if you want to write a strong woman, she has to be completely unselfish and be a hero and whatever, I think. Uh, and she has to kill a lot of people, apparently. That's uh, what these articles are kind of arguing. I really want to look at this list. <laughs> Movies with incredible role models for boys. Note the word incredible role model. First off, <laughs> first one is Finding Nemo. <coughs> Fuck. Odd Squad, the movie. I don't even know what that is. A goofy movie. Another Disney film, The Iron Giant. I think that's a Disney film. Ratatouille, Disney film. Up, Disney film. Big Hero 6, Disney film. Boy and the World. <laughs> Family and Environmentalism, okay. Elf, really? Why? Harry Potter, okay, I agree with that one. How to Train Your Dragon. I don't remember? <laughs> James and the Giant Peach. Never read it, never watched it. The Rookie. Don't know. Also a Disney film. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Okay. Hugo. I don't remember that movie. I saw it. I don't remember what happens in it. High School, <laughs> High School Musical. Another Disney film. Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Jimmy Stewart Against Governmental Corruption. Okay, The Never Ending Story. Okay, I've not seen that one. I saw um, Labyrinth, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Another Harry Potter movie. I think we get it. Harry Potter's a good role model. You don't need to put him four times on the list. John Lewis, Good Trouble. <laughs> the Kid Who Would Be King. Goonies meets Lord of the Rings. Napoleon Dynamite. Really? Okay. Stay home and eat all the freaking chips, Kip. Napoleon, don't be jealous that I've been chatting online with babes all day. Besides, we both know I'm training to become a cage fighter. Twelve angry men. 
Um, why? 12 angry men. This is a role model for young boys, 12 angry men? Have you seen it? Look, you know how these people lie? It's born in them. I mean, what the heck? I don't have to tell you. They don't know what the truth is. And let me tell you, they don't need any real big reason to kill someone either. No, sir. They get drunk. Oh, they're real big drinkers, all of them. You know that. And bang, someone's lying in the gutter. Well, nobody's blaming them for it. That's the way they are, by nature. More Harry Potter. Literally all the other Harry Potter movies. Love, Simon. <laughs> oh, God. A gay rom-com for teenagers. Okay. What Common Sense Media thinks is a good, you know, list of role models for strong boys are a bunch of Disney movies, a movie about, uh, fucking what's his name? John Lewis. <laughs> and, like, a bunch of sports movies. Now, a brief look at Twitter, uh, because again, I was, uh, chewed out for using it last time, so we're gonna look at it again. Anyone else wish a film would come out where you had a couple who are a real man and a real woman without having the female cast as a strong female character that must humiliate the white toxic male, be arrogant, condemn the perceived patriarchy, and only have gay or POC friends. <laughs> you know, if you want to think of a strong male character, I mean, the example that I always use is Aragorn from The Lord of the Rings. And the reason why he pops up in my brain is because he seems to be the perfect male character, aside from being, like, you could argue maybe he's a little flat at some times as, as a character. But what is he as a man? He's strong. He's a leader. Um... You know, you could say he's he's a handsome man and he's all masculine and whatever. Uh, but he is selfless. He risks his own life multiple times, loves Arwen, uh, and displays emotion uh, in regard to her character. And when people, you know, question him about her and whatever, he's, he's like, oh, I love her so much. He's loyal. Um, to her and to his his people. So, you know, if you want to look at a, a role model for a young boy, there's your role model. I mean, I, I don't know about Elf. You got, uh... Dad, I'm in love, I'm in love, and I don't care who knows it! Buddy, uh, not now. Uh, can you please go back to the, uh, to the pit? I'll come visit you in a little while, okay? I didn't know you had elves working here. Uh, but, you know, if you want to have a man who grows up being a gentleman and being strong and emotionally intelligent, that's the biggest thing, emotional intelligence, I think. Now, if you want to write one, if you want to write a strong man, you have to balance two things. You have to balance creating an interesting character with creating a strong man, and what does that mean? You know, but you can you can think of if there was a ten year old boy, what what do I think he should be seeing? If you're a woman, right? If you're a man, you can think if I was ten years old and I was watching this movie or reading this book or whatever it is you're writing, what would I want to teach myself about what it is to be a man? Write the character as being flawed, because every character has to be flawed. If it's a protagonist especially, it has to be flawed. I mean, we talked last time about how strong female characters are not flawed. That's one of the reasons why they don't work. Like Mary Sue type characters. You should be showing, if, if you're going for like a, a role model, strong male character type idea, the man should be selfless. He should be protective, not only of women, but of his friends, he should be protective of himself. He should be protective of the things that he values. He should have morals, you know, that he doesn't break. Um, you know, though I'm writing another book right now, the male character that I'm writing, he has certain morals that he doesn't break. And if there's ever a point 
that I, in later in the story sometime where he maybe I could say that he does break one that has to have an impact on him in some way you know he can't just flip around his morals and do whatever he wants to do whenever the fancy strikes him like in modern Hollywood for example and the character is tried you know they're trying to frame this character as being a proper man this is how a proper man should behave he should do whatever a woman tells him to do it's like well <laughs> you know if, if there's a man doing whatever anyone tells him to do whether it's a man or a woman it doesn't really matter well then maybe he doesn't have a spine you know i don't know about idris elba and pacific rim uh, I really can't fucking remember who he played or why this article was talking about him so much and had, had such a fucking hard on for this guy. But, you know, to each their own, I guess. <laughs> Hi, I'm actually a writer and I actually wrote a book. It's called Series. It's science fiction and it's available on Amazon and Google Play.